Hello, everybody, and welcome to our third series for today, third of five. We've got five two-game series here on the Beyond the Summit 1 stream, the Beyond the Summit 2 stream, the Beyond the Summit 3 stream, and Base Keep going to be doing a few series as well. I'm not sure if he's here for the long haul like we cast is here, but I'm hoping he will. He'll be casting over on twitch.tv slash basekip. Third series of the day, Speed Gaming versus Big God. Draft already well underway. Unfortunately, the Perfect World servers didn't want to let me connect, so I only just now connected in about, well, as soon as those video ads started playing was when I had connected in, so I uh, didn't actually realize the game had loaded until I connected in, but here we are. Game is live. Big God. We saw them at the start of today with a 2-0 victory over... Well, I've already forgotten. No, I haven't. It was over IMG, the Immortal Magneto Gaming. Uh, since then, they've had a bit of a break, and here they are looking to continue that good day to run. As for Speed Gaming, they just came off a series against Invasion, which I'm not sure if I have any updates on. How did that series go? It was a 1-1 draw. So Speed got a 1-1 draw and didn't have the best day one as well. Speed Gaming on day one, um, they had a 1-1 draw against Light Gaming. They lost 0-2 to eHome as well. So I think it was a 1-3 and three day one for them. They're currently sitting at 2-4 and four on the tables, so for them, a loss here and that top six opportunity suddenly, suddenly uh, isn't looking too good. Big God, they're 4-4. Four and four. They've actually made it into the top, well, tied fifth as far as total wins go, but there's some teams who have not played many games. Tongfu are 3-1, and one, HGT are 1-1, one and one, so you can have to look at these teams as potential candidates to challenge the top six as well, but... Uh, we're here, things underway. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit, and uh, going to be bringing you all the action here on the Beyond the Summit 1 channel. If you want to listen to some of our other casters, if you think I'm an intolerable prick or whatever it may be, you can check out Beyond the Summit 2, where the ever-so-lovely and cute Ty Zyclops is casting some games. And over on Beyond the Summit 3, we have the illustrious, handsome Egads casting some Dota 2. Or you have my fellow Australian, who's not really Australian, casting over at twitch.tv slash basekip. So, plenty of Dota 2 action going on on these other streams, but as things stand right now, it is Speed Gaming versus Big God. I'm glad you guys are here tuning in to some of this uh, fun Dota 2 action that is coming your way. So, we'll see what's going to be going down here. It is going to be the draft. Well, I mean, let's talk draft. We've got heroes. We've got heroes in front of us. I haven't even looked down at my computer screen just yet. I was uh, introducing stuff uh, as things were going on, but uh, it is Speed Gaming, Dire Side, Big God on the Radiant has the first pick. I'm not sure if this is like a... It seems like a set thing where Radiant's first pick every game, and uh, then you swap for game two. I haven't... I don't think there's any toss or anything like that. It just seems like Radiant is the go-to first pick side, and then you swap. I'm not sure if that's a set rule or what it is, but we'll see. Uh, so Juggernaut was the first pick for Big God. Vengeful Spirit Brewmaster for Speed Gaming, and then the Lion comes out. So they instantly snag a hero that can disable the Brewmaster. Sometimes you see the Skyrath. In this case, it's the Lion. So if he blinks in, you can get that Hex before he ulties. Or in the Skyrath case, the Ancient Seal. The Hex is a bit better because you can deal with him when he has the BKB too. The Skyrath Sands can be BKB'd off. Once you're Hexed, you're Hexed. He could BKB in bef before he blinks in, but not always the reliable way of dealing with it. And then the Silencer pick. That... That was picked before the Tide, I, bl I think. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to flash back how this draft panned out. Yeah, I think that was picked up before the Tide. Um, not a clear, obvious silencer game by any means. It's not bad uh, by any means, but it's not like a, okay, this is going to really cause problems for like a Juggernaut. Or, I mean, Lion obviously doesn't want to be silenced, but he's positioned far enough back that it's not like you're initiating it. I, I think silencer like synergizes as well with a like, good initiator like a Batrider. You Batrider blink lasso someone and then. The silencer gra guarantees you pull him away and you can kill that target. With Brewmaster, similar-ish thing where he blinks in and you can global silence as he goes in so he doesn't get locked down and killed. But generally, Brew's going to wait to go in for when he can actually get off an ulti regardless. He shouldn't need the silencer. Like, nine times out of ten, he shouldn't need the silencer to get off his ultimate. But we'll see. It may just be a pick that Speed Gaming like to run and feel they uh, can do quite well. Bristleback gets picked up as their fourth hero. And uh, looking for one more core hero, most likely, on the Speed Gaming side. As for Big God, they get their second support in the AA to go with the Lion. The Tide going to be your offlane hero. Most likely an ROTK Tide. Looks like a safe lane farming Juggernaut. So, a burning Juggernaut, and they need their mid laner, probably for Zhao Wei, depending how him and ROTK want to lane things. Or we may even see, like, a burning mid and get, like, the Juggernaut for the safe lane for Zhao Wei. There is uh, some flexibility as far as these heroes and lanes do go, and even the players. Like, this is... <laughs> Big God are not a fully serious team. This is, I mean, they've got all kinds of star power. 
I think the thing that's most incredible about this team is you have the two captains from the two teams that were in the TI4 Grand Finals on the same team. You have Zhao Wei and ROTK, the Vici captain, the newbie captain, teaming up, and then you throw in Burning, who is, by a lot of people, considered the best carry player like in the world, at least during his prime. Whether he's still in his prime is another matter since he's semi-retired, but you throw Burning in there, you throw a support player, Lamb, who is very comfortable with, has played with for a long time, and who's going to mesh well with Burning. And then you have Ice Ice, who there's not much to say about him. He's not really a known pro Dota player by any means. Um, he's just kind of... He's the icing on top, but just those four players alone, you're just like, holy shit, this is a dream team. That was like the old DK. When the old DK was formed with Mushi, Ice Ice Ice, Burning, MMY, and Lamb as supports, that was a dream team as well. This is like a dream team on a whole nother level. Not so much like a, a higher level, but it's like... A different approach. It's like, let's get the two best captains from TI4. These two guys led their teams to the Grand Finals. They're obviously got amazing minds and good skills to back it up. Let's put them on the same team, and now let's get burning. Um, that wasn't the idea of the team. So it wasn't formed for to be a dream team. It was actually formed because these, these players and teams did not want to have to train and take Dota seriously. They said, let's just play more casually and for fun. So they formed Big God, which was a team of kind of retired Dota 2 pros. Burning and ROTK actually announced their retirement, but here they are playing a qualifier for $1.6 million. I think we've even reached $1.7 million, maybe. It's uh, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> but uh, hey, why not? That's it, it's End of the day, these players love Dota. So even if they're not in like the serious let's boot camp train and be a, a full professional team that plays under Ace and all that, they still want to play Dota. They just don't want to have to deal with the burnout and the the stress that's attached. I feel like this is a team with no stress and no no pressure attached to it. So it's like you win, you win, you lose. There's no blaming. There's no looking for what went wrong. There's less emphasis on lots of scrimming, less emphasis on watching all your replays. It's just let's play Dota. Let's play Dota for what it is. And it's a kind of... It's good. To me, It's a, I like it and I also don't like it at the same time. I like it in the sense that... It's a very pure thing to do. Just play Dota for the, the pure passion, but at the same time, it's like, if they're winning tournaments, it feels like it should be the teams who are fully dedicated and serious to winning tournaments. Um, and Well, at the same time, I mean, it's not like they are winning tournaments, but it's like they're playing in a $1.6 million tournament, and they're taking away maybe a spot from a, another team who is a fully professional team, but looking at this list of teams in the Asia qualifiers, there's 16 teams, it doesn't really feel like anyone missed out, so... I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who want to see Big God in action as well. So I'm glad I get to cast them. I'm actually uh, looking... It's always fun to watch these guys play. And as far as skill goes and as far as how good this team are, definitely deserving to be here. It's just... They're not... A, like Unlike some teams, they're not really treating it in the, the same serious way. But we'll see Bounty Runes come out. Antimage blinks forward. He wants it. Doesn't look like he's going to grab it. SF picks up the Bounty Rune. Bristle gets the bottom one. So we'll introduce our two teams here. We had a bit of a kerfuffle. I didn't really... I was trying to make a point, so <laughs> I, was, I was being an in, insufferable prick. Go check out the other stream if you're done listening to me. Um, but uh, we're going to introduce our two teams here. Juggernaut evading that level 1 gank with his Blade Fury. It's going to be Lamb on the Support Lion, Burning on the Juggernaut, Ice Ice on the Ancient Apparition. And uh, Lamb doing the uh, nice little trick here. Wants to make sure the range creep doesn't get out in front. If the range creep dies first, the lane pushes out. Mid lane smoke. Here we go. SF looking like he may give up a first blood here. Magic Missile. The Glaze from the Silencer. One more, two more right clicks. And Venge gets the first blood. That's the Zhao 8 solo mid Shadow Fiend. And we'll see the Tide being played by ROTK in the offlane. For the speed gaming side, it's going to be Chao Yu playing the Anti-Mage. And uh, well, we'll see uh, the two supports in the hands of Melody Lovers, the Ventral Spirit. We've got YFTX, or NT, which name is that under? I'm not sure which one he goes by on the silencer. In the mid lane, it will be the Brewmaster being played by Piao. Okay, the NT seems to be a sponsor. So YTFX is uh, the uh, nickname for the silencer. And then in the off lane, it's going to be Elwi, or LWY, playing the Bristleback here at bottom. So we'll see how things unravel here, as First Blood is claimed by Speed Gaming. Shadow Fiend, one of those heroes that you notoriously want to gank Constantly. Want to give him absolutely nothing. Top lane, Magic Missile available. Antimage can blink forward. Could just go for Body Box. Let the Silencer get the kill. And Silencer quickly accumulating stolen intelligence. He's now got four free intel. Easy kill mid, easy kill top. Two. Zero. In Speed Gaming's favor early on. Shadow Fiend getting drunk and haze. That's going to make his life a little bit harder as far as last hitting goes. And AA seems to be maybe just going for some stacks. He realizes, okay, SF is going to definitely need some catch up this game. That's that's a thing <laughs> when your SF gets early first blood and is not going to be farmed well because of the Drunken Haze. Although, with that said, 
He's still 10 CS, so the Brewmaster's 7 right now, so hasn't hurt him too much. He's getting a decent amount of souls and seems to be doing at least respectably well in the mid lane. Mid lane. Bristleback going to come on through, has got Sentry Ward, DD Rune acquired, and I think hope, hope, would hope to probably try and uh, block the pull with this Sentry, but so far unable to really do so, and getting constantly mana drained. No quills for you! He's a coolest porcupine, not much of a porcupine. And the harass going to keep on coming out, so... At least started the stacks. SF going to fall back and may just farm this the old-fashioned way. Uh, no, he wants to stack it, maybe. We'll see the courier come out with Piao's bottle. So two-minute runes have already been taken, and we'll have to wait some time to... Or go for some bottle crow action, which is the other option here. And it looks like he's leaving the courier. This looks like a Venomance award or something. This does not look like a courier. Like courier advantage. Uh, we'll see. Um, Brew holding his own for the most part in mid lane. As, uh, he actually does overtake the SF now on CS. So. Bottle crowing and the SF being constantly drunk and haze. And you can accumulate souls, but there's no real guarantees of your farm once you have the drunk and haze. You play that RNG game mid. There was one crazy game. It was Ferrari on Viper against a Brewmaster, and he got crushed by a Brewmaster with drunk and haze. The Brew had like 20 CS to his 8 CS at one point. It was actually pretty impressive to see what Brew can do, especially, I imagine it was a bit of RNG, whether you just, I mean, you get some last hits, you don't. It like, ultimately does come down to randomness. Some games will do better than others. So far, SF is doing pretty well. He can Bottle Crow. He can use Razors to farm if he wants to as well. And now that he's about to level 5, that's where we're going to see him probably uh, start raising down creep waves and then falling back to the jungle, farm the medium camp, farm the big camp, especially if they're stacked up, which it looks like Ice Ice. It's his job to stack it. Lamb going to stack this camp, so they're going to have stacks all over the place. Xiao Wei, he's lit the torch and said, this is the game to uh, get me for big, get me carried. In the top lane, Chao use anti-mage doing what he needs to do. Just get his farm on, and he's having a good time here. Ty's getting a lot of XP out of this lane, though. Hits level 5 now. As uh, this top lane is... Uh, Oh, what's he venge? What's he doing? He's going to scout the Tidai who's looking for a pull here. They're looking for another kill on RTK. Last word is there. Now the magic missile before he can anchor smash. RTK doesn't even get off the anchor smash. Hello, intelligence. Hello, RTK. Going to be a little bit stupider after this one. As uh, they're going to leave the kill maybe for the anti mage. Yeah, he'll take it with a blink in and gets his first kill of the game. Meanwhile, mid lane. <laughs> oh, gosh. Piao's like, are you seriously just coming mid to mana drain me? Seriously? Why, why you do this to me? Why you have to mana drain me. SF has fallen back to the jungle, so they are going to give the lane to the lion to try to get him some levels here. Something we oh, see a bit of lately, with teams who can transition one of their cores into the jungle, be it something like a lycan, an axe, or in this case just a Shadow Fiend, using razors. You fall back to the jungle, give a solo lane to a support to get them that slightly faster level 6. And we'll see. Lamb make the most out of that as far as the, the mid lane is concerned. Not in too much danger. Brewmaster is level 6, so if he gets a clap ulti off, it is a dead lion. But uh, for the most part, it looks like Piao just happy to get his farm on. We'll see both teams with vision over the, the mid hills. This is something which always is contested. You normally see this first ward in the mid lane put down around like the 4 to 6 minute mark. You don't want to wait until your first wards expire. You want to buy that second set and get the... The first team to get high ground vision gets a big advantage because you can see your opposing team plant their ward. Like, if you put your ward on this hill or this hill, and then your opponents put a ward there, you generally see it get planted. So it's a much easier to de-ward, knowing exactly where it is. For uh, for Big God, though, if they want to de-ward this, they don't know if it's here. If somehow it was planted over here as well, it could be on this hill. There's a lot of places uh, Speed Gaming could have put that if they got the ward down first. So they don't even know if a ward is planted on the hill, but for, uh, for Speed Gaming, they could have scouted this out, although it looks like their ward maybe it's in range of it, but if it was planted from fog, it may not have been spotted getting planted. But one of those just small things which uh, those those mid lane wards really have a lot of importance around this stage of the game. Yeah, with an invis rune, would have normally maybe seen him go for a rotation here, but I guess he decides top lane's going really well with anti mage free farming, two kills on the tide hunter. And he just wants to farm in the mid lane. Get that Blink Dagger up. He could have gone for a potential kill on Zhao but Zhao with Aquila Treads has 900 HP almost, so he's actually a pretty hard kill to get without a support help. And Melody Lovers now shows up. Needs to stay out of this Observer Ward vision is the key thing. He doesn't know where that ward is, I don't think. 
Looks like he'll poke forward. So he's now been spotted by this Observer Warden. Making this move into the lane and... Well, does hug the creep, so he's been spotted anyways by... The, he, he knows he's been spotted by the natural creep vision. And it's going to be a smoke coming out from Piao and Melody Lovers. At this point, they didn't see the smoke. They have got a lot of vision across the river, though. So he, they'll see no one farming right now. It's going to get pushed to the tower by an SF double raise. This is a dead giveaway. Hey, why is no one here? Where did Brewmaster go? Rune is not spawning for 30 seconds. This is not a time where Brewmaster would leave the lane, but big god... Gonna walk right into this one. Both teams' smoke gets revealed. It's gonna be a gank at the bottom lane. AA in trouble. There's a clap. There's also an ultimate, but not gonna need the ultimate, so... Very awkward. They revealed each other's smokes, but they didn't see each other because of the positioning. End of the day, though, it's not really a kill that's worth it for speed gaming, because look what Zhao doing. We're getting a lot of damage done, done. Someone needs to TP and TP now. Well, this tower could be going down. He's got another creep wave coming into play. There is a glyph, and that glyph needs to be used here. Brewmaster, nice impel from Lamb. End of the day, doesn't do anything, but except delay his return to mid lane. TP now comes from the Venge, and tower not at deny range, which is probably a good thing for the SF, since he wants to make sure he can get that extra gold for himself. Four kills to nothing. I guess the, the brew rotation in the end is traded for a lot of tier 1 tower damage. I feel like if it was a kill on a Juggernaut or someone, it's well worth it, but... Getting just the one support, mm, bit bit more debatable. And SF is continuing his thing. He's top CS right now, falling back to the jungle. He's going to go for that mech build. First saw Mushi do this in the old DK days, with uh, the, the mech rush on SF, and it's I, it seems really good. It seems like SF can just do so much damage with raises and the Rec Room of Souls that tanking up on this hero is the way to go. You don't need to go for these damage items. You go for, like, a mech, you go for your BKB, you go for your Scotty. Then later on, if you feel like you really need to deal damage, you can go for our DPS items. But Juggernaut's going to be going Mask of Madness. He's got the Omni Slash. He's going to be the one dealing out most of the damage with his team. Going for a heavy stats build. No points in healing wards. Maybe gets one now at level 8. I don't know if he's used that level 8 skill point yet. But we've seen like a lot of this 1-1-1 one, one, one skill build out of these carry jugs. The one value point in that crit. Uh, now at level 1 becoming even more valuable than it once was. So Burning going to just continue leveling up those stats. Close to his Mask of Madness now. Actually has his Mask of Madness. Just got delivered. Hide at top has got level 6, so ROTK, well he gave up a couple kills, has got a decent chunk of XP, and even farm, he's 17 CS up top lane, but compare that to the, some of the farm of the other heroes in the game, he is not doing as well as some of his uh, counterparts. I guess the bristle back at bottom, he's the, the real counterpart, and he's on level 5 with just 14 CS. Uh-oh, Lamb, gonna find a blink dagger on the Brewmaster, which is not saying it was infected. Nice 2 here Impale, the Drunken Hazel slow him down, one more blink in 5 seconds. That's going to come up before the Impel, so Lamb should be a kill here. That Wave of Terror going to make sure of it. The Clap is there, won't need the Clap. Blink, right click, SF gets the T1 mid tower. So, once again, we see this rotation from the Brewmaster come at the cost of SF doing a lot of damage mid lane. Last time it was damage to the tower, this time it's the actual tower itself, not getting denied. And Zhao 8, 60 gold away from a mech. Going to swing himself towards the top lane. He's got even the point of Requiem of Souls. He could go for that melee range Requiem that does a lot of damage. Not sure if Anti-Mage is a... well, with Omni Slash he's a, he's a possible kill, but it seems they want to go for the, the Silence. That's a similar play where you take out these supports. Burning going to be going in. There is a Global Silence. He's going to use it! And Backup is on the way! Anti-Mage is there, line nearby as well. The right click's coming. Anti-Mage is going to blink onto land. The Hex as well as Impale, both available. Zhao Wade up top needs to bottle up. He took a lot of damage on the tower. Anti-Mage maybe could have gone for him, but... They're going to push him back. In the end, it was actually not a... Okay. Not a bad global silence from Speed Gaming. Just saving his life and at this point pushes Big God away from this top lane. Big God kind of want to fight and f and when they bring SF and Juggernaut off of their lanes to come top, they want to fight. They want to make something happen and they don't really achieve that. They do give the bottom lane to the AA but he kind of already had that with Jug farming the Radiant Jungle. Which is where this, I mean, talked about heroes who can transition to the jungle, give lanes to the support, not just the Shadow Fiend, who swung to the jungle. The Jug can do the same thing with the Mask of Madness. TP in from the SF, trying to keep Ice Ice alive with the mech. Doesn't look like he's going to succeed. The chase into the treeway just gets it. Ice Blast, well, I guess you can try kill off a Brewling or, or two, but not going to amount to too much as the Yules on the SF will prevent any kind of counter initiation or counter play. Top lane now. Here we go. Big God wanted to hold this. Six kills to nothing early on. Speed Gaming, the ones pulling ahead on kills, but farm very even between the two teams. Not as big a lead as it may appear. Big God, end of the day, are getting all their core heroes levels as well as farm. And Chao Yu needs to get out of there. Arotika has a Ravage. Ravage Omni Slash is an instantly dead Anti Mage. Anti Mage just does not have the survivability to stand into an Omni Slash, so. 
smart play not to go for that tower. Some players would have gotten greedy, said, I really want this tower, but if he gets hit by a rabbit, you can use that stun duration to guarantee the kill. So, bottom lane. Piao. Blink Dagger want. He's hit level 9 now, and he's getting decent farm on this Brewmaster. Not quite on the same level as the actual carries, and this is where Big God really have tr two, two true carries in the Jug and the Shadow Fiend. It's just the Anti-Mage just be gaming, but Anti-Mage, well, one of those very special carries in what he can do, as far as being able to split push lanes better than anyone, also just farm more efficiently than anyone. That famous game of Black getting 500 CS at 30 minutes in is uh, definitely comes to mind as far as what this Anti-Mage can do. No, not really many other heroes that can replicate that. Naga, you could try, I guess, with the Radiance. I'm not sure. I imagine it would be possible with Naga, but you'd have to get... Like, you'd have to rush a, like, naked Radiance without getting Boots and Bottle, because the Radiance is... I, I think you'd still need Bottle, even, just for the mana region. I don't, I'm not sure how you do it as Naga. Maybe if you'd like a Naga being supported by a Keeper of the Light for constant Chakra. But as far as what you can do on your own, Anti-Mage 500 CS with no real... Like, I mean, you have support zoning out your lane or whatever, but just free fun. So top lane now being pushed. The Jug gets the first point in Healing Ward, and... Maybe the SF taking down the tier 1 tower, up to 1400 gold now, and uh, the trade is possibly coming to mid lane as Beat Gaming start applying some pressure, but this tower is still healthy. The threat of a Brewmaster blink in is always uh, a bit problematic here, and well, Anti Mage. 13 minutes in, Treads, Battle Fury, and his Quelling Blade. He's right where he wants to be. This is the timing for an Anti Mage, and even though he's not top of the net worth chart, that can quickly change. SF at mid, gonna get jump, pops the mech, go for the Requiem of Souls, and well, Bristleback doesn't want anything to do with that. The Global Silence now being used as well. Lion TP's in, can't use spells right away, will turn with an Impale. Luckily, it's on a level 6 line. Tide, meanwhile, in the back lines, used a Ravage, wants to get the Silencer. It's going to go to the Ancient Apparition in the end from the high ground. So a 2 for 1 trade. Both supports for an SF. Space for the Antimate to farm, and... An alright exchange, I'd say, for Speed Gaming still. Chow Yun needs to be careful. Does not want to juke it out with this Juggernaut, who now has a Medallion for some extra damage amplification, and Tower gets down to deny range, so... That's gonna... be denied. Another Tower denied, as Anti-Mage can't do much about that, and... Alright. For Speed Gaming. You give up their first kills to Big God in that mid lane, but... I guess from their point of view, they're thinking, we killed this SF. And he's farming, he was the top farmer, so killing the top farmer on the, the opposing team side for your two supports doesn't seem like too big of a loss. Big God still looking for that level 6 on Lion. That's where at last fight, I saw Bristleback run into the Lion, like, is that smart? And I'm like, oh, Lion's just level 5, he, he seemed to know. There was no finger of death. That's why he's a pro player, not me. Chao Yu still farming up a storm in this anti mage. Also, has good levels. The level 2 mana void means if he does come to a fight, he has some decent damage output from that mana void. He can find a good low mana target. Be a Tide Lion AA. I mean, Tide after he's used his Ravage and Anchor Smashes will be pretty low on mana. And that uh, top lane being pressured now. No one really inside. Someone has got, got a TP soon. Burning maybe going to be the one to go for this one. They can pressure the bottom tier 1, but this is a tier 2. You're giving up to Chao Yu's anti-mage, who is already doing fantastic. Now they're going to get a silencer mech here. He's got Brown Boots mech. I'm sorry, mech, what am I talking about? Midas. And he's going to start transitioning into at least a semi-carry as well. Here that can make great use of this farm. And if you're going late game, which you kind of are with the anti-mage, up against the Shadow Fiend Jug, having more farm on more of these heroes and silencer one of those heroes you'd love to get it on is going to go a long way. Tide still looking for a Blink Dagger now. Up to 17, 1800 gold, and let's be a bit worried. There is a Brewmaster level 2 split now. So, speaking of leveled up ultimates, it's not just the level 2 mana void. They've got the primal split level 2, and could be looking to get aggressive off of this. Line is there, ready. Sing behind has got hex, but no finger still. We'll get it off of this creep wave, it looks like, at the tower, so should be just poking forward. There we go. Gets level 6, actually, yeah, from the creeps, and with that, he's going to make his way. To the top lane. He's going to TP up there. Looks like him and Burning may go for a smoke and try to get some kills using this uh, this Omni Slash or Finger of Death. But Speed Gaming, they're on the other side of the map. They're going for a smoke of their own. Anti Mage may be the one who gets caught out top lane, though. This is actually a worry. He's going to be spotted out 
by uh, looking at Radiant Vision does not see him just yet. They don't know where he is right now, and he's hiding. He knows this line is missing off the map, not to mention the jug, and he can just click this little score button and say, oh, line's level 6. Oh, Blink's in forward. They see him now. Blink on cooldown 2. Burning. Medallion, Omni Slash. Blink out, though. Oh, no, that was not the way that needed to go down. Lion needs to go first, I think, with the Hex Impale. I think they're like Blink's on cooldown, but it's a level 4 Blink. If that's a level 3, level 2 Blink, that's a kill, but... Big God maybe just not respecting what level of blink the anti-mage had there, because that was just not enough damage coming out before they could kill him. The, I mean, Lion was not in range for a Hexer Impale. That was nothing more Lamb could do apart from throw that long-range finger. And now you have finger and Omni Slash on cooldown and nothing to show for it. Oh boy. Anti-mage picks up a Vlad, so he knows he's safe for a little bit longer. He's got that two-minute window where... These ultis aren't up. His team's going to take a tower. He's going to accelerate his farm with this Vlad's, and they could even go for something like a Roshan off of this if they were feeling ballsy, but Titus Ravage, and that's something which could likely deter that. This Blink Dagger having not been scattered out just yet, but Anti-Mage, I mean, at this point you've got such a free open lane at top that... Oh no, they are going Roshan. They're pinging it out. Knowing there's no finger, no Omni Slash for another minute. They're feeling like they can make this play. Radiant Vision is decent around this area, but if you blink in, I don't, I'm not sure if the Brewmaster did or not. That's one way that this just doesn't get seen. Venge would love to come and use that Wave of Terror, but also if they blinked in, doesn't want to reveal what, exactly what's going on. But Jug is farming top, so they see Jug. Even if they reveal their Roshan, which they do just now, there's nothing Big God can do about this in time. They're nearby, but just the Ravage. If they're going to fight with Ravage Ice Blast, it, it kind of looks good in the team fight level, but I don't think they've, they're going to be here in time, not to mention it's just not going to be enough damage. Oh, Piao misses the clap, but we'll get the ultimate off. Lamb is uh, on the run. He's going to try hide in the trees here, and well, Jukes, that should be pretty obvious. Did not go for a TP, didn't have a TP. He had a TP, I think he actually gets out of there. It's a nice multiple hero impale, and Ravage still online nearby. Omni Slashes are there. Burning going to get one with the SF to start things off here. That's the silence. He did at least get off the global, but Bristleback now on the run. Omni Slash with a medallion. Down goes your Bristleback. Antimage does not want to fight even with an Aegis at this point. He is just not equipped for fighting into the physical damage. The minus armor with SF, with the presence of the Dark Lord, the medallion, means he's going to quickly become pretty squishy on that Antimage. Now, Vlad's will help some of his armor problems, and it looks like... Uh, he doesn't want to fight at all. He's going to make his way down towards the bottom lane. SF, BKB, it's complete. Feeling more and more like speed gaming. Just seem to have a pretty clear plan with this anti-mage. They time their Roshan well. They're giving him space. They're not fighting when they... They can't. Like, they... Once they lose one or two Antimage, they know they can't fight with him. The Ravage gonna catch Melody and Piao. They weren't trying to fight, but... Big God say, we'll make you fight. We'll come to you with a Ravage. Now a BKB being used. He can't TP out. Doesn't have mana. Doesn't have a TP once more. The Mana Void is there, ready to go. Blinks forward, trying to block his path on through. And Antimage actually not exactly the, the best place for that one. Hits the Mana Void and Silence are now a couple Glaives. Hex is there. Zhao Wei, he's low, but he's not out. The Ice Blast now comes through with an Impale. Chao Yu... Not going to drop to that one, but takes a lot of damage and also tight. Off to the side, brought down by the Bristleback and the Brewmaster. That was the chase on a hero they could kill. The SF they would have loved to have brought down there, but in the end, not enough. Chase potential or damage, burning. Doesn't have an Omni Slash here, and Anti-Mage, well, well, he can't really man-fight the Juggernaut. Could look to mana burn him a bit and then just back off. Does have the Aegis at least to fall back on, so... He'll be looking to maybe use or burn that sometime soon. If you can just trade it for like a, a Ravage or a Omni Slash, it may be worth it once it's about to expire. But for now, you've still got a good couple of minutes on it. So probably you're looking to use it more defensively or for more uh, team fight slash objective purpose rather than just wasting a cooldown at big gods. Anti Mage has a Yasha now, level 14. And uh, all in all, Speed Gaming are getting this anti-mage more and more farm. They haven't really pulled away by any means off of this. This has been, and from minute one, it's been pretty much flat. Like, sure, it's gone up and down a little bit, but this is a very small scale. Often you see 20 minutes in, there's like a 5k scale of up and downs. This is ultimately a very flat graph we're looking at here, if you are 
rescale some of these numbers. So it's never been more than... It's never reached a 2,000 net worth lead for either team right now. Experience, kind of a similar story. Just over 2,000 Big Gods had at any point in this game. So Big God have been getting slightly more XP out of the map. And uh, it's been speed gaming. Mostly on the form of the Anti-Mage, getting a lot of farm. But Bruin Bristleback, not seem to be scoffed at. Bristle, Crimson Guard, Ogre Club. Going to be making his way towards what I can only imagine is a BKB against heroes like Tide, AA, Lion, even the SF. It's going to be doing a decent amount of magic damage with his BKB ultimate and raises. And they're going to deward their Ancients here. They've <laughs> realized that. They're falling back on this farmer into game. Anti-Mage, his farming pattern's being messed up by his, his lack of Ancients, perhaps, and... Melody Love is going to help secure that one. So, Radiant Jungle, mostly already missing. So anti mate's spending a lot of time wandering, looking for farm, and not finding farm right now. It's like, yikes, where, <laughs> where are the creeps at? Blinks down bottom lane, and we'll be safe for now, and then be able to farm the, farm the enemy jungle, farm the ancients, and look to be as efficient as possible with this. So, top lane, the rest of his team are also getting their farm on. Top lane is the Brewmaster. Going in, forcing out a mech. Ideally forces a BKB, but that is not going to happen. Unless Yahweh really feels panicked here. There's just not any other good range initiation. It's not like there's a lion with like a blink hex. If you see like a Brewmaster clap on you and he, you know he's got backup from some kind of blinking lion type hero, then you're like, oh crap, let's just BKB and maybe TP out or be on the safe side. But um, not the case. You could event, you could theoretically just swap and cancel out a BKB TP. And no real blink support here. Silence like that kind of more global support as far as not wanting to fight. He's going to have an Aghanim Scepter, not exactly at a fantastic time, maybe around the 30 minute mark if he can play fairly safe in his own jungle, just keep using the Midas whenever possible, which he's struggling to do right now. Needs to find a creep to Midas. And anti mage his Aegis having expired. We'll see what the next move is going to be. It seems uh, it doesn't really... The Aegis didn't seem to affect the strategy at all. And I kind of like that sometimes when you know you have a strategy and it's very kind of... I mean, it's the anti mage strategy. He's also pushing lanes, creating space for his team to farm, pressuring out the lanes for his big god to defend. Just because you have an Aegis doesn't mean you should try a team fight. This anti mage matches up very poorly in a team fight against Jug and SF. The physical damage is huge. And then combine that with the lockdown of a Tide, a Lion. This is not a good game for anti -Mage to fight. So I feel like if they tried to fight just because they had an Aegis, things could have gone really wrong. anti -Mage, maybe he dies once and just dies a second time right away. There's a Hex waiting for him for a Lion. There's a Blink Ravage waiting for him. So good decision not to force fights with the Aegis. And now they force Big God to split up. They force him to defend top, defend mid. They see the TPs and they look to fight. Lamb, who's getting close to his Blink Dagger, going to get chased down now as well. The Primal Split being used and... Tide just going to get the hell out of there. So they're going to get two kills off of the big god TP out. They see them TP top, they see them TP mid to farm their carries, and suddenly supports as well as IRTK on the Tide get left alone. So just strategic play coming out of Speed Gaming. And definitely something to be learned from uh, how they're looking to, to play this game out. Anti Mage has now got the Manta style and farming well. Probably his next big item plus Aegis is when he, they do look to actually group up more and force the issue. Alternatively, they just do this continuous 4-1 split push. But it feels like if they want to actually gain objectives such as going high ground, they may need to uh, bring the be with the anti-mage. Which is going to come in the form of, yeah, like something like one more item. RTK. Get those illusions on him, anti-mage. He's just too much panic mode. He wants out, and it's with good reason. The chase is on. Xiao Wei's there, looking to cut people off. Burning. Well, he's got some decent movement speed once that Mask of Mance is back up, and Bristleback doesn't really have a good escape here. Melody Lovers also in a tough spot here. It seems they want to try to get both, but it's going to be just the Bristleback who they can end up picking up. So similar to what we saw happen to Big God, where you TP out some of your carries, anti mage rotates mid, your Brew goes top, and then suddenly people get left kind of to rot and die. In this case, it was a Bristleback. So an actual core hero getting caught out as well, which is uh, probably similar to the AA plus line getting caught out. Anti Mage falling back. They've blocked the uh, Radiant Ancients, which uh, Anti Mage is probably like, man, I would have farmed those. You didn't have to block them. I'll take that farm. So against Jug SF, Anti Mage could be thinking he wants some evasion from something like a butterfly. At the same time, the the Basher Abyssal Blade just allows you to actually man fight. If you if you feel like you're going to be forced into team fighting to some extent, the Basher Abyssal build. Maybe like a Basher Butterfly type build may be necessary. 
At the same time, there's good reason that you need a BKB. That's the, that's always the issue in these games that drag as Antimage, when you're up against your opponent opposing team who has a lot of late game carries as well, in the form of Shadowfiend Jug, is what items do you go? Especially when you need a BKB, which this game he kind of does at some point if they go ultra late game to deal with a Ravage, to deal with a Lion Blink Hex. He's going to want a BKB. I don't want don't want to say as his next item. It could be as his next item, and it looks like it will be the Basher first, but... Unless they somehow push high ground with an Aegis, I feel like BKB has to come eventually. Either that or Heart of Tarrasque. Heart of Tarrasque, while it's not Magic Muni, the raw HP to outlast the, the Disables and not die during them is what you're after there, but... You're going to have a double Ravage from Tide. You're going to have a lot of damage from this Juggernaut, who's now purchased a Basher of his own. So we can see Basher on Basher. Xiaowei's going for the Evasion himself, so... And, I mean, that's another item. Anti-Mage will kind of want, but not be able to fit in. He's going to want an MKB. This is... Against heroes like Pierre, you have to go for this because of the high Evasion. SF, at least, it's only going to be the, the uh, lesser Evasion of a Butterfly compared to the 50% PA Blur Evasion, but... Still, it's still bothersome. You know, Twenty-five percent evasion coming out from the talisman soon, and there we go. It's a completed butterfly now. You can see SF. He's up there with the anti mage. Very small difference between these two heroes and their farm. That's where speed gaming. They're running a what looks more much more like a one carry lineup here. Bristol, I guess, getting close to a BKB, here, but BKB Crimson Guard. I, I mean, we've seen time and time again. Omni Slash is dead. The minus armor, the Omni Slashes, and I don't think the Omni Slashes get reduced by the Bristleback. I'm not sure how that works as far as the direction you're facing. Or at least from what it seems, like the last few Omni Slashes that have been on him, with them, I guess the Medallion did amplify the damage, but it still felt like Bristle was not tanky at all. And this build of his, the BKB Crimson Guard, is not giving him a lot of armor. He's getting five armor from the Crimson Guard, but after the BKB, he may just want to pick up a Plate Mail and start working on either an AC or a Shivers Guard. This is a good Shivers game. SF and Jug. Offering a lot of right-click damage. Slow down a lot of these heroes, not to... Yeah, slow down the attack speed, and more importantly, beef up your own armor. Anti mage at bottom. He's looking to make a move here. Has the Aegis for some time, and he's just going to do this with his illusion. There's a Tide here, and anti mage actually going to come in now and look to finish off the tower. Oh, Ravage from afar! He has Aegis. Can they kill him twice? They need to save the Impale. Can they time this Impale? Burning's got an Omni Slash. This is going to be tight. They're going to Global Silence. Now Chow Yu going to just blink on out. He's still not out of the clear here. There's an Impale in a few seconds here. He's got to juke the Impale. Can he do so? He does! Chow Yu! He breaks some ankles here. There is an Omni Slash. No, he's got no mana for it. Chow Yu going to mana void. Now blink back to the side. They saw where he blinked though, but here comes the SF. BKB Requiem Souls. Ventral Druid a bit slow in the swap, he still gets it off, Bristleback cleans up the Lion, and it's Elwi going ham in the front lines, but he can't fight Burning! Somebody needs to deal with Burning, the Mana Void was used very early on in the fight, and Chow Yu, he's just getting right click down, he cannot fight Burning, he can't fight the SF, but who can? It's the Bristleback, Elwi gets the Shadow Fiend, and he's still alive on 15 HP, the tight right click doing nothing, Burning gets hit by a Boulder Toss, in comes her anti -mage. Burning's gonna die! Oh dear, this is not going well! Big God gonna lose their Tidehunter as well. Four dead now. The Ancient Apparition, the only one left standing. He's got an Ice Blast. He's trying to line it up. Bristle TP's home though. And Anti Mage, he's healthy enough. He's got the Max Mana Shield. What a well played fight by Speed Gaming. And unfortunately for the Lion, he had a chance to kill the Anti Mage there, but guessed wrong with the Impale. Oh, speaking of Impale, Finger Chow Yu. They need some right clicks here. The Cold Feet there as well. Blink out the Urn damage. He's gonna shatter. Well executed gank there, Ancient Apparition now, the only man standing. Is he going for this? Wand, clap, uh... Piao? Really? Buybacks are available for the Tide. But Tide is like, I don't want to buy back for this. You're on your own, AA. I'm sorry. TP out. Uh, there we go, took his time. <laughs> I'm like, are you gonna TP? Tide shows up, no Ravage available. What a team fight by Speed Gaming. Antimage, unfortunately, does end up dying for them, but it's still a big win, killing Jug SF. I mean, it was a full five man wipe. They lost Antimage and Venge or something? I don't think they lost more than that. Big downward swing here. You can see, yep, five for two. These little dots representing the kills here. Venge as well. And they lost Silencer as well. So they lost Silencer. Both supports in the Antimage. It was a five for three in the end, but. Antimage was alive for all those kills and got a lot of gold, a lot of XP. And he's taken over, or he's been at that top of the net worth chart for some time, and 
a little bit further ahead of the SF now. As far as items go, he's up to 3k and... We'll be thinking where he wants to go. I wonder if it, after a fight like that, he may be like, I kind of just want to BKB. If he can just BKB in on the line and get an insta-kill, it's just so easy and nice for him. Piao now. Oh, no no Hex available, just the Impale. The Ice Blast is going to do some some work, but he's got the ability to survive this. No Ag, yeah, no Ag. I'd say, unless this is an Ag's ulti, but he'll be okay for the time being. Does ping out the ward. It's like, uh, yeah. Actually misses the uh, sentry. That's annoying. This dewarding this hill is not fun. And I don't know if he realizes that that ward is still there. Obviously, he probably didn't want to stick around, considering the position Big got her in to start making some ground here. Piao can't really fight too well with his low HP, and he's being pinged out. And he has an Ice Blast and now picks up his point booster, but they're actually pushing down the mid lane. Saying this is maybe the time to fight. anti Mage has uh, picked up something. It's going to be a BKB. They lose the vent to start things off, but that's minus damage on and around the Juggernaut. Also an Omni Slash cooldown, and with a BKB on this Anti Mage, they're ready to fight this one. Burning drops a healing ward. They just kind of have to try and bring that down. Tide Ravage available. Just the one Ravage, though, the singular. Piao may just look to BKB engage. If he can find someone like the Lion with this Blink Clap or the AA, he wants a support. And there we go. BKB's onto the tide. In goes your anti -mate. See, BKB's very early. The bashes start coming out as well. Zhao Wei can't really wreck him here. There's no swap to cancel, but just the bashes from the anti -mate makes his life hard. The Crimson Guard being used as well. There's a silence over the tide. They're going to bring down Zhao Wei before the tide can ravage. Now he gets thrown up in the air by the Brewmaster. This is not how ROTK envisioned this one happening. He can ravage, but it'd be just a wasted defensive Ravage that wouldn't even save his own life, I don't imagine. So they'll lose Tide and SF, hold the Ravage. Actually, he did Ravage. What am I talking about? Oh no! What? That was not a time and place to use the Ravage. Now we go down the mid lane. Speed Gaming, looking like they may give Big God their first loss for day two. They didn't have a good day one. They're currently four and four in the standings and need some more wins. If they want to get into that, we'll stay in that top four and get to the land finals. But right now, it's high ground being sieged by Speed Gaming. Topsy turvy game. Burning on the front lines, 20 seconds for Omni Slash. Good impale on three. Lamb, the master of stalling here. Even mana draining the anti mage illusions, but this tower is still being brought down. Brewmaster now with an assault crest, which is going to just help this push out even more. Burning's going to be careful. Has a manta style, but he's low on mana. Can't actually use the Omni Slash right now. He needs money. He gets swapped back. Can't use the Omni Slash. Now the silencer comes in. Burning buyback is available. He's going to have to use it right away, but they already got the melee racks. Not going to worry about the rain tracks. Now it's time to retreat. Try cut your casualties here. If you lose one like Avenge, it's not the end of the world. They want the bristle back as well, and they'll get it with the Omni Slash. Vengeful Spirit, well, no real way out for him. Can Big God go back the other way? Can they take a racks themselves? Ravage up in 60 seconds. Primal Split up in 3 seconds. I don't think this is a fight that's going to be too easy to take for Big God in the enemy base. Not to mention Anti-Mage is BKB backup, has a buyback available. Anti-Mage can just go in, throw everything he can, and then buy back and have round two. We'll see how much pressure Big God feel they're under if they need to go for some kind of a straight down mid play, but they're going to go for a smoke. They're looking for the pickoff on the Anti-Mage with the Lion. The Hex plus Impale duration with right clicks, it's going to be close. I feel Anti-Mage may be able to survive it now. He's got pretty decent armor. 20 armor, not to mention it's just a level 1 hex duration. And, well, Big God decide we're not going to get much done. Uh, Bristleback's going to respawn, and he has picked up the plate mount, so the Shivers, Shivers Guard's going to be coming his way, and this is going to help out a decent amount against the Omni Slash, although when he's completely ditched and left alone like he was in that last fight, he will still go down. We've seen our, our share of incredible team fights this game now, over the last 5-10 minutes. And this is... You see an anti-mage game and you think Snoozeville, a lot of people. But this hero, when he gets forced to fight like Big God are doing to him, or when he gets a lot of pressure on him, like we saw that bottom lane, this spot here, this right here, those jukes, Lamb is going to have nightmares about that later tonight. Omni Slash back up in a few, and we've also seen a Roshan respawn. Can Speed Gaming get their third Roshan? That's been one of the big reasons they're in such a good position, having that complete Roshan control, and they're going to scout it out soon. Antimage maybe wants to pressure out some of these lanes here. SF nearby, 
What kind of Manta style of all items? I feel like the item on its own is not really going to offer him that much damage output or anything along those lines, but you dodge vent stuns, you can, I guess, get out of a global silence, which isn't bad. Antimage picks up the Aegis, so Chi's going to go to the Brewmaster. He drops his Vlads, what? You want the Vlad? Oh no, Vlads is actually on the Antimage is going to sell his Vlads. So Antimage sells his Vlads, Brew then buys a Vlads, it looks like. So this is a newly purchased Vlads. Making up for the fact that Antimage just sold his, Piao says, okay, I'll take one for the team, spend 2k gold on this. Well, not crappy item, but on this item that he'd rather a support or someone had. Silence with an Ags himself will be getting to work on a refresher, I imagine, fairly soon. Antimage is going to be leading the charge down this bottom lane, Abyssal Blade in hand. We'll see where it goes next. Possible Butterfly, there's no MKBs, and you, if you're a big god, you're not thinking MKB until you see the Eagle Song. When you see that, then you're like, okay, now we need MKBs. But by then, if you go for a push during that time, maybe you break break part of the base before those MKBs can even come up. For now, Burning just wants his Abyssal Blade. He needs that extra bit of lockdown, also lockdown that can go through a BKB Anti-Mage. Well, BKB Anti-Mage is not the only way. It's an Aegis on the Anti-Mage as well. Brew! Just gonna walk on up with Cheese BKB in hand. Hard to bring him down. You've got the Venge with the defensive swap capabilities just sitting behind as well. Ty just gonna blink in with an anchor match, trying to force out the BKBs. Does force the Brewmaster one. You see the Ty blink in, you think Ravage. And that's where Piao gonna go for that. We're gonna just make sure he's plays on the safe flag. We'll pop the pr primal split. Antimate's gonna blink in, looking for Lamb. Takes the Lion out of the picture. That makes his life a whole lot easier. One less time to worry about. Now the Shadow Fiend in some trouble, but the Ravage from Tide catches up three. Can they kill the Antimage? Doesn't look like it. Not with the swap out. Elwi also alive. The Vengeful Spirit gonna be the only casualty. That's minus damage. Omni Slash in the back lines gets the Silencer. Just the supports dead on the speed gaming side. The escapes all around. Bristleback TP's home. The Antimage and the Brew get out of there safely as well, and they take the melee racks. They get what they came for and didn't even have to use the anti-mage Aegis. They've still got a full three minutes left on this Aegis. They can go top. All it's going to take is one more melee racks and suddenly all three lanes being pressured heavily. Good news is Tide has a refresher for the next fight, but imagine if that push can come before the ra Ravages up. It's going to be a, a short timeline. It looks like anti going to have to go back to base to heal up, unfortunately. May buy some boots to travel, though, and already Bristle pushing out the top lane. If they're fast about this, there won't be double Ravage. There may just be a singular Ravage, and ROTK won't want to refresh. He's going to be wanting to wait for this 90 seconds here. Is he going to get the travels? Looks like for now he's holding on to the treads. At this point, you haven't actually got that much attack speed. Just the Yasha really giving you attack speed, so... Boots of Travel is really not the ideal item in some ways. Until you maybe replace the Aegis with a Butterfly. Big God of Smoking looking for pickoffs, but they... I mean, you've lost melee racks mid and top. Your opponents have an Aegis. Where do you think they're headed? They're headed right for this big sucker. This melee rack's right here. That's the target. They've got to go through a few towers to get there, but... Looks like the good news is Big God will have double Ravage up by the time it happens, as uh, Bristle picks up a Shivers Guard for himself, so item's going to continue to accumulate. That's the push down the top lane. Antimage, easy tier 2 tower, and not really in position to defend just yet is Big God. 5k on Bernie. He's got no buyback for a minute. He's saving his money for now. I guess hoping that they can stall long enough so that he'll have a buyback if they need it. He's out wait. His Shadow Fiend's been solid as far as farm goes, but needs impact to go with that. Elby in a position. Ooh, Ice Blast, Aghanim's, Aghanim's Scepter now for your. Ice Ice on the Ice Blasting Ancient Apparition, and they're going to go for a smoke from behind, but the smoke, they need to fight now. Brewmaster and Primal Split, they're just going to focus the base. Brewmaster looking to create space, burning, kind of blinks into some stuns here. Can he actually be brought down? He's got an Omni Slash, he's going to get mecked up, in goes your Antimage with an Abyssal Blade, burning! He's dead! He's got no buyback for 35 seconds, and that may be all Speed Gaming need. Next on the chopping block is Zhao Wei. Antimage force a blink out, there's Ravage, number one, can't use number two, doesn't have the mana. ROTK needs to get back to base, needs to heal up. And Big God may lose their racks in that pro in that time. Jug's back in a second. They'll have a second Ravage, and they'll have Jug 15 seconds. They're going to lose top lane, possibly more. Rain tracks at mid going to go down. They're going to have one last hurrah, maybe at the bottom rain tracks. Where is that Juggernaut? Eight seconds, seven seconds, six. They got to go now. This rain tracks is dying fast. Chow Yu's going to get it. This is going to be Mega Creeps. Jug can buy back, but the Mega Creeps are already there. Antimage now gets Ravage. Juggernaut not buying back. It looks like they may just be throwing in the towel. He's not using it, and with that, 
Speed Gaming actually do lose four, but they've got the Mega Creeps. Anti Mage gonna respawn in a second. Easy blink to safety. Even with three dead here. Speed Gaming in no. They're in no trouble. They're gonna have a Brewmaster split for the defense. They've got buybacks on Silence, Avenge, Bristleback. Everyone has buybacks as far as they're concerned. The Anti Mage has one. The Brew has one. It's GG. ROTK is gonna call it. Big God lose their first game of the day. What a performance from Speed Gaming. This is the speed gaming I expected to see. I was surprised when I saw they kind of had a shaky start. They, they were before this match, speed gaming was two and four, and this is a team I thought could cause some upsets, and upsets they have just done. They take down the burning Zhao 8 ROTK Dream Team as uh, a 42 minute affair with a well played anti mage. Everything was just well played about this team. Piao on this Brewmaster 6 0 and 13. They just had the much more clear cohesive strategy. So, with that in mind, Speed Gaming take down game one. We'll see if Big God have something prepared for game two. This is not a team that prepared. This is the uh, the casual gamers, as far as Big God are concerned. They formed in the premise that they don't want to train or scream. They just want to play tournaments for fun. And, well, for fun isn't working out for them right now. Game two coming up. Stick around. Big God versus Speed Gaming is going to be back in just a second.